All right, everybody, welcome back. We have our last section for this chapter, 4.6, and it's negative and zero exponents. So first, we're, we're going to recall what a power is. This is a power, 3 to the power of 5, for example. The base is the 3. The exponent is the 5. So hopefully you remember that from uh, previous grades. Now we're actually going to talk about what happens when we have negative exponents. So for example, if this was 3 to the negative 5, how that would look. So imagine a is 3 and uh, the n is 5. So if we ever have a negative exponent, what that negative exponent does is it drops it to the denominator. And likewise, if we had negative in the denominator, it would bring it to the top, and that would be the same as a to the power of n. So in the example here, we have 2 to the power of negative 3. That drops it to the denominators, and we're left with 1. If there was a numerator, a coefficient in front of 2, then this would be 2 over a to the power of n. It's only affecting the part with the negative exponent. If there's a full fraction, what that negative does is it flips the numerator and the denominator, as you can see right here. And so we've done that here. 4 over 3 is the same thing with the negative exponent, is the same thing when you switch it, 3 over 4, and it changes it to a positive exponent. Keep in mind that when we have 2 to the negative 3, this is not the same thing as saying negative 8. This is 1 over 2 to the 3, which is 1 over 8. The negative does not drop down like that. So we're going to go over some of the other um, power rules. So the first one is multiplying. When you're multiplying powers with the same base, notice they're both x. When you're multiplying, we always add their exponents. And so the example here, we keep the exact same base. We do not multiply this. This does not change to 9. We keep the base, and we simply add the exponents. So that's when we are multiplying powers with the same base. We add their exponents. 4 plus 6 is 10. The next is dividing powers. Again, we have the same base here of x. When you are dividing powers, you simply subtract their exponents. And so again, our base will stay exactly the same. And then we just subtract these exponents. So if we have 6 subtract 3, this is then 4 to the power of 3. If we have a power to a power, so we have this power inside, x to the power of a, and we raised it to another power of b. What you do in this case is you multiply. So in our situation here, we have 2 to the power of 5 to the power of 3. And so a power to a power, we multiply this, and we get 2 to the power of 15. It does not mean to multiply the 2 here. We multiply just the exponents. A 0 power, so this one is slightly new, um, is anything to the power of 0 is always 1. It doesn't matter what it is. We can have 2 to the power of 0. It's still 1. We could have 2abz to the power of 0. It will still be 1. So in the example here, we have 2 to the power of 5 to the power of 0, which is we have a power to a power, so we multiply 2 to the power of 0, which is always 1. So I went sideways, but you know form we should be going down. And continuing on, we're going to do some examples. So we're only going to, going to do the examples that have check marks here. So using our power rules from before, I'm going to start with the top here. We have m to the power of 7 times, there's no operation in here, so that means times, m to the power of 6. We have the same base as m, and so we're multiplying. What do we do with their exponents? We add their exponents, so we get m to the power of 13 over, and then we still have our denominator of m to the power of 15. So we're doing this in steps. And now we have m to the power of 13 divided by m to the power of 15. And so in that case, we're dividing. We subtract the exponents. So 13 minus 15 is negative 2. Remember, we can never leave powers with negative exponents. So we must write this with a positive exponent, which is 1 over m to the power of 2. Let's try this one. This one, we have a power to another power. Any power inside this power on the outside has to get multiplied. So we're going to multiply the negative 1. We're going to multiply the 4. Do not forget that this 2 also has a 1. So we also have to multiply it by the 2 to the power of 1 in there. So this is then 2 to the power of 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And then we have x to the power of 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And we have y to the 1, negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. And again, remember, we cannot have negative exponents. So anything that has a negative exponent, it must go to the denominator. 
y squared is not negative, so it gets to stay exactly where it is, and we're only going to bring down 2 to the power of 2 and x to the power of 8. And you could take this one step further and say that the 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Here's another one, power to a power. So we have 2 to the negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. We can't leave negative exponents, so it's 2 to the power of 3. And if we wanted to evaluate, we could do 1 over 8. Here's another one. We have a negative exponent, so we're going to flip inside, which is 4 over 5. Notice the negative just stays there. And now we can change it to positive 1, which just leaves it as negative 4 over 5. So try these other few questions here. And if you have questions, uh, please bring them to class. See you there.